Amen. Our reading this morning is coming from the Gospel of John. And as I told the children, this is Jesus' prayer for us before he departs. A lot of people will say the last words of Christ were those on the cross. But these are the last words that Jesus leaves in his deep, high priestly prayer for us. This is Jesus talking to God the Father in his prayer for us. Let us hear these intimate words between Father and Son as he prepares to take leave. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Please be seated. It's a pretty dense passage. In this passage, Jesus begins by summarizing what he was called to do. And then he declares to God, I've done it. I've done it. I have shown them what you asked me to show them. I have told them what you asked me to tell them. And now, as I leave, I give them back to you to care for. What Jesus says his job was, was to make God known to us. Well, let me go back. What he said he was called to do was to show them eternal life. And then he defines eternal life. And it's not what we think. We think eternal life, too often we think eternal life has to do with life after death. And living in heaven and Glory has something to do with honor, 
We glorify God, Jesus says, by doing what I was sent to do. By giving them the words you gave me, I have honored you. And now they honor me by believing the words that you gave me. It has very little to do with praise fans, with bright, shining lights, with someone being held above somebody else. It has to do with honoring your mother and father. And you do that by living the way they ask you to live. That's honoring. And that's what glorifying God is. Living as God asks us. It has nothing to do with raising God up. God isn't a God in the sky. God is a sky a God among us. And that's what Jesus is saying. I'm among them. Help them glorify us, honor us, by living what we've taught them. And he says, it's knowing God. And that goes back to that living. How do we know God? Well, how do we know anyone? And it was kind of neat in Sunday school today, because we talked about knowing one another. And how do we get rid of false notions about the other? As we work through the civil rights movement in the 60s, and as we're working through LGBTQ rights right now, we have learned that it is in the stories, in the faces, in knowing one another, that we can change what we think. And so it is in the experiencing of God that we get to know God. It has very little to do with the words. It's the experience. It's the experience. And we experience God in loving one another. In serving one another. It's when we are handing something out or being handed something that we experience God and we get to see the face of God. And that's how we know God and that is eternal life. And then he said, let them be one. Let them be bound together as you and I are one. As we are one. And that word one there is just that, the word one. One unit, inseparable. And Jesus said, as we are, in the same degree, in the same manner, in the same proportion that you, God, and I are one, I want them to be one with one another and one with us. And we know in the Trinity that while God and the Spirit, the Father, Son, and Spirit are one, they're all each distinct and unique, but they are still one in activity and love and desire and plan and action. And that's what Jesus is acting. Though they are many, let them be one in their expression of love for you through the work that they do. Let them be one of one mind working together. Jesus says, He came so that we may know God. Jesus died so that we may know God. Jesus was raised so that we may know, so we may experience God. Jesus lived and taught so that we may know God. Jesus ascended to heaven to leave us with the Spirit so that we may know God. And we are called to be one so that they all the other days, everywhere, may know God. Just as Jesus' cross was to show them and us God, so are we called to show God to the world. We aren't to be God, but we are to be in the image of God in 
the footsteps of Christ, for the body of Christ risen, to show God to the world. That is the only way that they will know God. So to show them. One of the things, again, from this Sunday lesson this morning was that thinking rarely causes new actions. But new actions often lead to new thinking. The more we act Christ-like, the more we will think Christ-like. And the closer to God and one another, and that's what Jesus is praying for us in this passage and in every moment and every instant of all our lives. May they know God through their actions and may that then change their thinking so that that will change their actions so that that will change their thinking. May they grow closer to you so that we may go closer to one another and in growing closer to one another we will grow closer again to God it is an endless circle it can only stop if we stop it by not acting by not being the people of God that Jesus came to help us be it is in that that we glorify God it is in doing what we were sent to do, that we are glorified, that we are filled, that we are together with God. The Hebrew word for glory is kabad, and it's a much better word than glory. It is being in the presence of God. And if we use that in our translation, the more we are in the presence of God, the more we are in the presence of God. As we go to prayer, let us think about when we are in the presence of God and how we can act as though we are in the presence of God. More and more each day, how can we glorify God through our actions? and then be glorified by being in God's presence and in the presence of one another. Let us go.